Open an account, please. Oh, are you saving for something? Yep, my money's gonna save the world. We're gonna turn wind into energy! And even make it possible for the sun to power stuff. We're making farms more efficient. And turning gas into electric. No exhaust pipes, see? <laughs> We're doing all that. We sure are. Quick way. My name is Simon Brockape. I'm an Algonquin artist from Vidigan Zibi, which is just a little north of Ottawa. But of course, all of you know that uh, we are on Algonquin territory, which stretches uh, to the east uh, towards Montreal and uh, to the west up to Mattawa. And of course, all the rivers and streams that uh, go into the uh, what is known as the uh, Ottawa River. Uh, today we're going to do summer birds and uh, we're, we're going to use a cutout and uh, temper paints and uh, these brushes. It's springtime and uh, every spring when I was uh, growing up my grandmother would uh, have her eagle eyes out looking for uh, robins for birds of spring and we'd be very excited when we would see a, a robin. But my uh, grandmother uh, would also tell us stories about uh, summer birds. It's a really interesting story. But what I'm going to do is we're going to get right down to the art. And as I get through the art, uh, as we finish one of them, I'll tell you the rest of the story. So uh, temper paints uh, uh, can be uh, picked up at uh, the dollar store uh, or ordered. Yeah, I think because of COVID, uh, we're starting to order stuff online. So we're going to use, uh, I've got yellow there. Uh, this is kind of a, a, a red color. It's quite beautiful. And uh, blue. I like turquoise too. So we're going to use all these colors on a couple of different uh, uh, stencil prints. This is cardstock. It's a little thicker than uh, uh, ordinary paper, but you could use ordinary paper. When I was a kid, we used to use uh, uh, cereal boxes. We used to cut them open and print on them. And, uh, so you could do that. You could make your own stencil. You could uh, uh, download the image off the uh, internet, trace it on, and cut it out with your scissors. And uh, you, you don't have to have one of these expensive dollar store brushes. Uh, but you can uh, use a, just a regular sponge. Some of the craft shops are open. You'll, you'll have to check. Anyway, so here we go. So I'm going to uh, start off with this yellow. And I'm just going to pat it on. So when you get to the uh, edge of the stencil, just be a little careful that you don't go, you don't stick your brush underneath the bottom of it. 
So this is the yellow. So patting it on. The techniques that you could use is limitless. So there's the uh, yellow. And I'm going to go with this beautiful reddish color. So I'm kind of blending it in, you can see here. Now I got blue, but I'm going to uh, use the blue more like this. Put it on the tail. You can also make dots with it. See that? See those dots? Anyways, uh, my uh, grandmother used to tell us uh, stories uh, in the winter. Uh, the winter is the best time to tell stories because in the past, uh, people would be worried about, and presently, uh, people are worried that uh, if you tell stories in the summer, say we're telling the, this uh, uh, summer bird story, that the birds will stop doing their thing you know those they'll stop uh, uh laying eggs uh, they're gonna they want to listen to your stories so that's why we tell them in the uh in the winter uh even plants uh that they're, they're worried that uh, the plants would uh uh be listening and and not growing and i and i think uh, uh the, the lesson there is that in the summer uh our job is to uh uh watch the plants make sure they're properly watered uh, we're not spending time telling stories so we're spending all our time uh, totally focused on uh, growing the plants uh, for food okay so there we go so uh, my grandmother would say that uh, one spring the birds didn't come north and people became started getting worried about it you know where are the birds uh, how come they're not flying north uh, uh, every spring they come they come and we see these beautiful robins and the Canada geese start flying around and we see ducks in the water and so they decided that they were going to send a brother and a sister uh, south to figure out what's going on find out what the problem is so they go on this long journey south they have all kinds of adventures uh, going south. Uh, they, they have to cross rivers. Uh, they have to cross uh, through forests. Anyway, so they, they get uh, south and they see all the birds are in these cages. This giant had uh, uh, loved the birds so much, he didn't want them to go uh, north. And so uh, he put them in cages. And so the, the brother and the sister uh, we're trying to release the uh, the birds out of the cages, and every time they would they uh, would try something different, the giant would would scare them away. Finally, they uh, they figured out, let's go at night when the giant's asleep. So they uh, snuck into the the giant's uh, village. They they released the birds. They start flying north, and what the people saw was. As the birds started flying north, the uh, the snow started melting, the grass came up, the flowers came up, the plants, the nut trees, uh, the bees started coming and pollinating the the plants for the food, and uh, uh, so the, everybody was happy that the summer birds had finally arrived, and they didn't have to worry about uh, uh, summer. Anyway, so back to our artwork. So we're going to do the roofs. Uh, I'm going to do another 
another technique uh, using the same uh, stencil. So there's one. So I'm going to be careful. But if you're, uh, you got to be careful that you're putting down to the right side. If you're not that careful, you could let, wait for it to dry, and then uh, and then do it. Uh, I'm going to uh, I'm going to mix some uh, green in this next one, make it a little bit darker, and some purple. So there's the green. Okay, so we're going to do a purple one. That's what we're going to do. So I'll start with the, the yellow. And I'm going to start mixing the uh, purple in it. So there are birds that uh, live here or in your region uh, all year round. And uh, one of the birds that I like is the uh, chickadee. And uh, the chickadee makes a couple of different sounds. What is its, you know, the typical chickadee dee dee sound. And uh, what I was told that uh, what they're doing when they do that, that sound, they're warning other chickadees that something, uh, there's danger. So it might even be, be you walking around it. So you'll, in the summer, you'll hear them. The other one is, uh, uh, it, it's a sound like this. It's a beautiful sound. You, often you hear them in the morning. And uh, my grandmother uh, would say uh, the chickadee is, is uh, talking to the worms, saying, uh, uh, do you want to go to heaven? And uh, so the worms would come up. The, uh, the bird would uh, get the worm, lift it up, and fly up in the sky with it, and then eat it, of course. <laughs> so so uh, uh, jita they call it. Okay, so I'm not sure what this is going to look like. There you go. And uh, there's different, uh, there'll be some other examples uh, on the uh, site associated with this workshop and uh, give you some other ideas. Uh, post your uh, uh, your artwork on social media. I, I want to see uh, what you've done. Uh, and so we can be as creative uh, as we want. Uh, the, the creativity for this is unlimited. Uh, so enjoy uh, your day uh, making summer birds, tell those stories. Uh, you may have other bird stories uh, that you've heard. Uh, tell your friends and uh, have a great day. Enjoy the artwork and uh, be creative. Be Gwitch. Thank you. Quay Quay, everybody. Glad to uh, be with you this afternoon. I hope you enjoyed the uh, summer bird story. Uh, I heard it every year uh, from my grandmother, and she'd be all excited uh, looking for uh, the first birds of spring. Often it's uh, uh, robins and the parts of Canada might be other birds, but we just love to uh, uh, be able to see that first uh, side of spring, which was the which was the birds. And that story 
uh, really resonated with me uh, uh, growing up. So Kwe Kwe, hello everyone. And uh, so one of the questions in the uh, uh, chat box is, what kind of materials can you use to make a uh, stencil from? So historically, my ancestors use birch bark, birch bark paper, and you would cut out uh, an image. It could be a bird, for example, and they would uh, put the stencil on birch bark and, and you could scrape uh, one level of the birch bark to another and you, we, you would create these uh, uh, stencil images. But today, uh, you could use anything. You could use uh, uh, print, printing paper, which is uh, using the material that you have available to. So it might be uh, a uh, uh, ordinary paper that you get from your printer, cut it out, use that as a stencil. You could use uh, 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 a, uh, a card, car like cardboard, or I was even thinking, uh, uh, a cereal box, you know, cut out the uh, image out of cereal box and then use that, that as a stencil. In the uh, video, I used a plastic sheet that I got from a stationery store. And uh, that's a little harder to cut out with the scissors, but uh, it, it'll last a, a long time. You can use it over and over again. So uh, use your imagination, use what materials you have available uh, to make your uh, print. You could even use, uh, 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 you know, the uh, uh, paper that you wrap your sandwiches in. So uh, it's a variety of materials that you could use. And then this question is, uh, uh, is it good that everyone, everyone's picture will turn out differently? That That's what I'm encouraging you to do because uh, it should be, it should look like mine, but it could, uh, but it should look like your bird. And there's no particular type of bird that I'm uh, thinking about, but it could be, if you're thinking about it, it could be a bluebird. You, you see a lot of bluebirds in the winter. It could be a, uh, uh, a red cardinal. There are lots of cardinals uh, flying around uh, throughout Canada, particularly Ottawa. We see lots of uh, cardinals uh, and they're very beautiful. And they're really bright red. Uh, I love uh, chickadees. You know, the, there was a little round birds and uh, uh, chickadees have that, like the black cap on it. And I was told that uh, in a fall, uh, and keep your eye on them, that the chickadee will hide 60,000 seeds. And its braid actually gets bigger uh, by 30% uh, in order to be able to remember and find all those seeds. Uh, you could check that out on the internet. It's uh, some scientists went out there and measured the, these chickadee heads. Uh, I I don't remember if I told the story in the uh, in, in the uh, video, but uh, my grandmother in, in the summer we'd hear these beautiful uh, bird sounds, and it was like, <whistles> yeah, I think I did tell that story. Anyways, uh, it, she said uh, it meant jeet. Uh, in, uh, in a native language. And the, the uh, uh, chickadee was saying to the worms, uh, do you want to go to heaven? And so it would pick the worm up, fly way up, and then of course it would be eating it. So uh, uh, it could be any bird, uh, your favorite bird. Uh, so uh, so uh, another question is, where did you learn these skills? Uh, so when I uh, uh, was growing up, when I was young, I drew all the time. I, I had a pencil, I would draw on uh, cereal boxes. We did always have a lot of paper. Uh, and uh, I would draw on anything I could get my hands on. We even drew on uh, those birch bark, bark, birch bark sheets. And uh, uh, we used those. Uh, you, a pen on a birch bark sheet is... Uh, is beautiful. So uh, uh, I would I was drawing all all the time. My grandmother would tell me stories about what time was what it was like in the old days, uh, in, in uh, traditional lifestyle, and I used to do a lot of that kind of drawing. And as I got older, and I went to school like all all of you, uh, 
I, uh, I, I had a wonderful art teacher. Uh, the art teacher really taught me a lot. Uh, uh, for example, color theory, how to mix, how to mix your paint, you know, mixing uh, uh, yellow and red, you got orange and, and uh, uh, all these sort of new skills, how to do designs. So I, I use a sort of organic line. Uh, so I would start drawing a bird by using a, a circle and I would uh, draw the wings, the beak, the other wings and its tail. And when you look at it, it kind of forms this uh, organic uh, circle. So that art teacher taught me a, a, lot of the, a lot of these particular type of skills as an artist. And uh, so school is, uh, was critical in my learning as being an artist. And I knew at a very young age, I was gonna be an artist. Uh, we're fortunate today to have uh, a, a lot of artists uh, 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 listening in, in today. I know there's one, uh, her name is uh, Alexis uh, Ray Brown. She's from Ottawa Carleton Virtual Elementary School. And uh, I've seen her artwork, it's beautiful. I know her parents. Anyway, so uh, lots of artists out there. Uh, and uh, another question is, do you use animals in your art? So the answer to that is yes, absolutely. Uh, Algonquins relied historically and presently on animals. Uh, you know, I've been told stories uh, about the bear. So I'm from the bear clan and uh, the, uh, the bear clan, uh, uh, stories are, you know, the bear is really big, uh, but uh, there's actually paintings that are maybe hundreds or even thousands of years old in the region, the paintings on rock, rock, rock art. And this one particular uh, piece of art is at Bod Echo Park, which is just uh, west of Ottawa. And it's a bear and you can see the little bear prints, well, big bear prints. And and the, uh, the story or the teaching that's been passed on to us is that even though the bear is large and big, when it walks through the forest, it walks softly. In other words, the bear lives sustainably in the, in the forest. So those types of teachings uh, come down to us over the generations. So each of these uh, animals can teach us something. Uh, another story that I remember is uh, an otter. Uh, in fact, uh, where I live, I live in the middle of Ottawa, which is on uh, Algonquin territory. And this winter, I, I had the great otter uh, of seeing an otter. And uh, there was a hole in the ice. And just outside the ice was a, uh, a frog. And I go, where did that frog come from? And I guess the otter had gone down it got into the, uh, the the bottom of the canal and found a frog, and the frog uh, uh, was going to be the uh, the otter's dinner. But uh, the bear historically got this council together and was asking all the animals, "What can I teach? What can you teach human beings?" And the otter said, "I can teach human beings about unity, about getting along, and." Uh, I can teach him by my behavior. And some elders tell me that the otter will, will go into the bear's dead and they'll spend uh, a winter together. So they've learned how to cooperate and to get along. And a lot of beadwork, uh, if you know beaters, uh, some of the beadwork style is called otter. It's an otter beadwork. And it's two lines and it goes up and down. And you probably all know relationships go up and down like that. So the beav that's uh, the beaver tail in the sand next to the lake or next to the river. So the, beaver, the uh, uh, otter is reminding us uh, that we, we have to get along with each other. So uh, th those are just a couple of uh, stories. I'll tell you another story. Uh, uh, a little bit later. later. Uh, so uh, what is your favorite bird is another question. Uh, 
I, I really don't have a favorite bird. If you wake up really early in the morning, you'll, you'll hear, hear these beautiful uh, bird sounds. So that all the birds have these beautiful songs that they sing in the morning when, when they wake up in the, uh, in the summer, in the spring. Uh, I, I'm kind of partial to uh, uh, chickadees, uh, but, I, but also there's another bird uh, uh, and, and it's called whiskey jack or wasajak. And uh, wasajak is, uh, is kind of like a human being, you know, we're, we're not perfect. So wasajak is uh, the kind of person that uh, if you had tea in the afternoon and cookies, and you invited people over, say it was uh, three o'clock in the afternoon or middle of the afternoon, Wasajak wouldn't show up at three o'clock. Wasajak would show up at four o'clock. And I've got lots of friends that are like that. You know, they're tricksters, you know. So uh, 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 a lot of these birds are uh, maybe special to you. This time of the year, we have hummingbirds, which are are, are beautiful. Uh, so, uh, I've got a, a question from Jeremiah, uh, would, who would like to know uh, what was your very first drawing? So uh, probably uh, I started drawing before I remembered things, you know, and we all do that. You know, we do, we do those uh, circular drawings uh, with uh, like sticks for, uh, for arms and legs and eyes. And all children uh, start out uh, as artists. You know, we all have that artistic uh, ability. And that's why I encourage you to uh, keep up your artistic skills, you know, keep drawing. Uh, so I probably, uh, that was one of my first drawings, but I, I've, I've actually got one, a, a drawing that I did in first grade, uh, which is a, uh, a, a picture of a, of a traditional, uh, house and, and there's a person walking in front of it with buckskin and all that. So I still have that. And uh, uh, so I, I probably drew family members first. So, uh, okay. So the other question is, you have used geese in your art before. Do you have a story or teaching about geese? Uh, well, there certainly are a lot of uh, geese stories. And where I live in Ottawa, is next to uh, a lake uh, and a river. And uh, you can see geese there uh, all pretty well all year round, except when it gets really, really cold in the winter. Uh, but uh, ge geese are, are beautiful. The Can Canada geese, and they form that V. And there's a story, uh, the Jibwa story about uh, 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 Natabush. And of course, Nanabush is kind of like uh, Wasajak, the trickster, who doesn't do everything right or perfectly, you know, like, like, like human beings. Anyway, so was it the, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the uh, Nanabush uh, took some string, made some string, and decides rather than eating one goose, he's, he wants to have 10, 10 geese. So he goes under the water, swoops under the water, it ties a dot, a piece of this string around each of the uh, uh, geese's legs. And the geese went, do you feel something on your legs? And it goes, yeah. They said, I bet you that's uh, with, that's uh, data bush. And uh, they're, they're, he's, wants, he's gotten greedy again. He wants to eat all of us. And so they, to teach him a lesson, they started flying up. And, uh, you know, that string, they kind of formed that the V using that string. And as they started flying up, uh, one dot came loose, another dot came loose, and all 10 dots come loose. And, whisk, and uh, uh, he comes fly, falling down out of the sky into the water. So that's a, a data bush story that uh, I, I told my kids when they, they were growing up. And uh, it's probably one that you may, you may have also heard. Uh, so geese, Canada geese are beautiful things. Uh, uh, I, you know, I think I, I read somewhere that the scientists had uh, uh, looked at uh, why the geese fly in the form of a V and they take turns uh, being the leader. That uh, 
they're able to fly 30% further by having uh, one goose taking turns becoming a leader because they they kind of fly behind each other and uh, they don't they don't have to fly in the, in the wind as much uh, as uh, uh, you would if you're flying by yourself. So the, the teaching there that we get from elders is that cooperation uh, makes light work. So, okay. Uh, Amar or Amir from Third Cliff, sorry, Amir, uh, Third Cliff Park Public School wants to know why uh, are you interested in this type of art and technique using stencils? So, I think I mentioned earlier that uh, Algonquins used stencils to create artwork on birch bark baskets. So if you had a, a bird image, you'd have these beautiful birch bark baskets and you would scrape around the edge of your, your birch bark bird stencil. And then you would scrape away the bark and you would have, uh, you would have this sort of uh, silhouette of, a, of an animal. So I try to use uh, and try to be inspired by what I call Algonquin art history. Uh, the, uh, uh, my ancestors uh, produced artwork to pass on uh, knowledge from one generation to another. And that's why I like the, uh, the stencil technique so much. I've used it uh, most of my life and I use uh, uh, ins inspiration from, uh, from the stencils. Uh, so the other question is, can you please tell us about your big art project at the LRT station? So uh, those of you who have gone on the uh, light rail transit system here in Ottawa, uh, if you go to Pibisi Station, and Pibisi is the, the Algonquin word for eel, you'll see this beautiful uh, uh, canoe with 100 uh, paddles hanging down from it. And uh, each paddle was painted by a different Algonquin artist from, uh, from, the, from the region. And each paddle uh, tells a story about the what's the person's life. Sometimes uh, one artist uh, painted a, uh, an eagle. Her father had passed away. And uh, when her father passed away, she saw this beautiful eagle and felt that the eagle was her father visiting her. And uh, so she, that's what she painted. And then I've had my uh, uh, grandchildren, one of, one of whom was six, uh, do a paddle. And I've had actually uh, three of my grandchildren uh, doing paddles. And, uh, you know, they painted uh, things uh, that they, they loved. So the, the installation, is uh, beautiful paddles hanging down. You can look on the internet to see it. And there's also on my own website, which is simonbrockape.com, uh, uh, there's a link to a, web, to a website that describes each of the paddles. So each of the paddles, there, there's a story about the artist. You just click onto the ones that you like, the artist's name, the title of the paddle, and the inspiration, and uh, it, uh, it it'll just give you a, a good overview of all the artwork on that. the The other thing that's at uh, Pibisi Station is uh, a large sculpture, which is uh, I think three and a half meters high, which is quite quite large, and it's a Algonquin moose. And uh, there's two, three. Uh, uh, of these whiskey jacks or wasajuk on it. And uh, it's a story my father told me and my, uh, one of my uncles who was one of these great hunters had gone hunting in the fall in November. Uh, they had gone to the park just north of Gittigan Zibi and uh, it had just snowed. And so they, they got to the park and uh, my uncle got out and saw these two uh, what, what, which I'm calling whiskey jacks. Uh, in English, they're called uh, Canada Jays or Gray Jays. 
and the great, and he says to the Grey Jays, uh, go find me a moose. And, uh, and so they flew off, my dad's telling me the story. They sat there all day and uh, probably eating bologna sandwiches all day, talking about what great hunters they were. And uh, my father said, at the end of the day, the sun started coming down. And what do you know? These two birds fly back and uh, just behind them is this big bull moose. And uh, so the so if you go over to uh, uh, Pimacy Station, you'll see that on uh, June 21st, uh, the city of Ottawa, I did a, uh, a wayfinding symbol and it's, it has all kinds of Algonquin uh, symbols. You'll see the moose in there. Uh, there's uh, uh, all these different Algonquin uh, animals, birds, fish, uh, the outside of it. The, in the uh, center of it, there's a directional symbol, which is a, a, a copper spearhead. So Algonquins use copper uh, quite extensively uh, as far back as 5,500 years ago. And uh, they would uh, uh, be, beat the copper to thin sheets, fold them in, and make these beautiful uh, tools like spearheads. Uh, I found one, which is a, a spearhead about six, six or seven inches long, twice, twice your head width. And uh, it was actually quite heavy. So uh, uh, that is part of, uh, that'll be unveiled at PBC Station uh, virtually uh, on June 21st. And it, those images will eventually be at each of the stations. So they're on these uh, boulders. And if you're familiar with Ottawa, your neighborhood, you'll see these boulders that range from maybe uh, this wide to six feet, six feet wide, large, large ones in your neighborhood. And uh, my uh, 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 daughter, Emily, asked my, my father, where did these uh, boulders come from? And he told her, well, one day it just rained uh, these boulders. And so uh, uh, in Ishtabe, Algonquin people and other uh, indigenous people refer to these boulders as grandfathers. So, uh, so when you're out there, uh, talk to your grandfather. And they use it, they would be used for uh, uh, symbols or wayfinding points. So if you were gonna meet somebody, say, I'm gonna meet you in that big boulder next to what you, that X river, you know, or, or the lake. So, uh, so, the, so I'm sorry, uh, I'm gonna pronounce Lieka's name wrong. I hope that's close. Sorry, Lieka. Uh, when you make a mistake, you sometimes change your art into a different type of art. Uh, a friend of mine who's also an artist says, there are no mistakes in art. Uh, so, you, you, you know, you have, and, and yes, so, uh, so I, may, I may be doing something and uh, uh, creatively, and then something else inspires me. Uh, so uh, you try to use your art in a creative way, an inventive way uh, uh, to, to inspire you. So yes, uh, if I make a mistake, which I just said we don't make mistakes, but if I did something a little bit differently, uh, I would use that to make, create something, uh, something else. So are you working on any projects right now for Corpus Christi School? So if you're at Corpus Christi, uh, uh, my, my children went to Corpus Christi school and uh, we did a, a, a large uh, tree of life there with, with handprints. I'm not sure if it's still hanging there, but it was there uh, a few years ago. And uh, so I, I continually, uh, I'm working on new projects. I just did one for uh, CBC uh, for, uh, Indigenous History Month. So if you look at the CBC website, you'll see this uh, beaver image. There's two beavers swimming after each other. And it's just to remind uh, people in the region that we owe a great debt to the uh, to beavers because beavers uh, created the lakes uh, 
that you'll find all through the region. So after the this big uh, ice age, as the glaciers melted and water started running from the glaciers, beavers would come up and dab up little streams or even rivers. And over hundreds of years or and thousands of years, these dams got bigger and they would create these uh, these beautiful lakes that we see uh, throughout the re region. And uh, we refer uh, to the beaver as an uh, ecological engineer. And uh, they have really shaped Canada. If you ever fly over Canada or you spend your time uh, at a cottage, you'll, you'll see these uh, lakes. So uh, are you work? Yeah, that's the Corpus Christi question. Thank you very much. And Grayson is asking, uh, do you know a lot of your language or a little? Uh, and what is it called? So uh, I know a little, about, very little of my language. So at the beginning, I said Kwe Kwe. That's a, you know, a greeting that uh, uh, Algonquins use. I was out in uh, uh, Nova Scotia with a big bot and uh, I was at a school and I said, I'm gonna teach you how to say uh, hello or greetings in my language. And I said, Kwe Kwe, and they went, oh, that's how we say it, you know? And uh, so the uh, uh, big boss say hello, Kwe Kwe, or, or Bigwitch. And so uh, when I was growing up, uh, we, you know, we we were not encouraged to uh, speak our language. Uh, my uh, uh, parents were concerned that uh, I wouldn't get a job because I had an accent. But that's all changed today. Uh, my my son took Algonquin uh, in uh, in college, uh, and we're we're all trying to relearn our language. So I, I think uh, the. Uh, Indigenous or First Nations languages in uh, Canada, the number of speakers are increasing uh, every year. So that's a good thing. Uh, and, and that puts, a, I'm glad you asked that question because I've got to commit myself more to uh, uh, learning my own language. So, so do you spend a lot of time in nature? Uh, the answer is yes. Every day, uh, you know, even uh, uh, I shouldn't even say that here, even here in Ottawa. But in Ottawa, uh, we have the most green spaces of any uh, capital in the world. Uh, we're fortunate. And where I live, uh, I've, I've taught at Carleton a uh, number of years, over 30 years. And uh, we have the Rideau River, uh, the uh, uh, Rideau Canal, and a lake. So I spend two or three times a day walking in nature, which is really important. Just uh, south of us uh, in one of the little lakes, uh, there's actually a beaver, a beaver lodge. So uh, uh, yeah, so that uh, I think that is all the questions that I, I have. So uh, Begwitch, thank you very much. Have a good day.